Hey y'all, it's Lynn Howard, and today we are going to talk about making time for your passion, which is, of course, writing. Why, of course? Because I'm a writer, and this channel is for writers. I guess readers could use the channel too, but we talk about indie writing because that's what I do and that's what I love. And I've told you, I want to start adding a few more things in this channel about making time for our passions because I do get asked a lot, how do I find time to write? Now, disclaimer, I no longer work outside the home. Um, I have become a caregiver for... I say family member, our families go back literally three generations. My best friends, grandparents, and my grandparents were best friends. So she has guardianship of her disabled second cousin, we say nephew. I think of him as my nephew as well. So I will be caregiving for him from home, which gives me more time to write. However, you heard that part where I said, I'm still caregiving. I have to find time to do these things, right? I have six tips for you. Why six? Couldn't think of a seventh, to be honest with you, because I'm at the end of my Botox shot, so I'm getting the brain fog. The shots will come again next month, and hopefully I'll get sharp again, but for now, here's my talking head for the month, because we gotta, we gotta mix it up, right? You guys don't wanna see only vlogs. You want some tips from a seasoned writer. I have, I think I counted 34 books recently under my belt. Um, I have three pen names. I don't talk about the other two. We talk about me, Lynn Howard because that is who I am nowadays, and probably will remain forever. I have been with a traditional publisher in the past. I did not like it. I just, I'm a control freak. I've said it a thousand times on this channel. I'm a control freak. I like to have complete creative control over my work. So my first tip, and this is a very important one and one that I'm trying to focus on a lot myself this year, is enforcing boundaries when it comes to your writing time. Writing time for a writer is like surgery time for a surgeon. At no point would someone call a surgeon in the middle of their surgery and be like, hey, you busy? No, ha ha ha. We need to enforce these boundaries. So if someone calls you and you're in the middle of writing, are you busy? I'm working right now, is it important? Is it an emergency? No, I'll call you back. And at that point, if you get stuck on a scene, you're taking a break, Call them back at that point. I tend to always answer my phone because I'm a bit neurotic. My phone's ringing, it's my mom. I have to answer it. Recording for YouTube, what's up? Well, they get out of the fence for the fifth time. I'm out there, up am the fence again. It wasn't an emergency. I answered the phone and it wasn't an emergency, but she still told me the story about her goats. I love the goats. I'm not mad. I love goats. I, I, I'm just one of those people that is always afraid there's going to be an emergency. Someone's going to need me and I'm not going to be there. So I always answer my phone. Um, but a lot of times, you know, my, my family and my best friend, she always does it anyways, have gotten really good about asking, are you busy? And if I'm in the middle of a break, if I'm in the middle of a research, you know, or I'm stuck on a sentence or a word, yeah, I'll, I'll take a break and talk to you. But I've begun to say, I'm writing right now. Is it important? You have to safeguard your time. Amy Landino is one of my favorite channels. She's not, I don't think she's a writer, I think she has a book, but she had um, this whole segment and interview and this man, and I'm sorry, I forgot his name. I'll try to look it up and put the segment in the bottom below this video. But he said, if your neighbor were to come into your house and try to steal or come into your property and destroy it, you're not gonna let them, right? You're gonna protect your property. So why is it if you're in the middle of something and you're busy and that same neighbor comes over and gabs about nothing important for an hour, we allow it. We're giving up precious time because we all have 24 hours in a day. And at no point is the next day guaranteed. So we have to learn to set boundaries and safeguard our creative time. Tip number two segues off the first. Find your creative time. Find the time that your body really comes alive. I used to sit down exactly at 10 a.m. and that was when I started writing. I do write through the day, but I've noticed that my creative juices really amp up around four or five o'clock and that's when I get the bulk of my words out. I'll still write throughout the day, 
because, you know, I'm home again. <laughs> but even when I was, you know, working outside the home, um, at the funeral home, I still would do chunks throughout the day. I would write a little here, do a little housework. We talked about setting time budgets. You, and you can still do this during your creative time. You know, you need to get all this housework done or you need to take care of your, your baby or in my case, you know, my relative. Time chunks, use those. But find that creative period, that, that time, that, that twilight, I guess, when your creative juices really get going and set a schedule around that. Number three, segueing off. Schedules are gold. Not everyone is at home during the day. Some of us have full-time jobs, part-time jobs. We have to leave for, you know, kids' baseball games, their dance recitals. We have to take care of our kids, things like that. Set a schedule that is perfect for you. Make sure you set a schedule around that time that you've discovered is your twilight of creative. If it's after dinner time, you know, you, you, the kids are in the bathtub, sit down to write. Um, the kids are napping, sit down to write. You're going to find your schedules are your best friend. Schedule blocking is another great tool, especially if you're, you know, you're at home with your kids, things like that. We all have our schedules with our kids, or at least I did. I assume everybody did, but we all have the same schedules, right? And we know what time the kids are going to get up. We know what time they're going to eat. We know what time they're, they're going to nap, snacks, everything. If you use schedule blocking, that's another great tool. So you're not saying at one o'clock I'm doing this, at three o'clock I'm doing this. You have these blocks. They're literal schedule blocking. I'll try to find a link for you guys and put that down below too. Um, there's a couple really great ones that I found. Some are like homeschool moms that I actually like their schedules and I use them. Find a specific place to go with that schedule. If you're using a pen and paper at your kitchen table, that's okay. When I first started writing, it was in notebooks with pens. And then my husband bought me a laptop and I would sit on my bed with my iguana. I'll have to see if I can find a picture to insert somewhere in here for you guys. And my dogs and I would sit on my bed and I would type. That was what I did. When we moved to this house, there's a jet going overhead, sorry. When we moved to this house, it's a three bedroom house. It's got a finished basement. Um, I had my office, which I call, they, my kids called it the cave, and then found out later, that's actually a thing, the writing cave. It was in the corner of a basement at a computer desk. That was it. That's all I had at the time. And then as the kids have moved out, I finally got an actual office. Which do we like? Do we like this display? Find a specific place that feels right to you. I'm not saying you can't shake it up. I do go outside sometimes and write when it's beautiful out because I love fresh air. But this is where I come in, I sit down, my body knows this is where we create. I don't craft in here. I try not to craft in here. Don't usually craft in here. I come in here at my certain time, my body knows this is where we're creating. If you can find a specific place to go with your schedule, It'll start getting your body trained that it's time to create your words. Tip number five is not going to be real popular. You're going to have to make some sacrifices. If you generally watch two hours of Netflix, watch one hour. If you normally go out to eat every weekend, go out twice a month. You're going to have to make sacrifices if you truly want your passion to become part of your life. It, just like any other passion, we make time for it. Writing is our passion and if you want it to be your career, you truly will have to make sacrifices. My husband gets home around 6.40, we eat dinner, and he goes downstairs to watch TV. I'm not done working yet. I don't usually finish my day until 7.30, 8 o'clock because like I said, I break up my time during the day to do housework, but around dinner time is when that really comes out. I'm not sacrificing the time to write, I'm sacrificing the time to watch TV. So I may only get to watch TV, which right now I'm hooked on Vikings, which is like 2015 or 16, I don't know. But I've sacrificed my time because this is what I love to do and what I want to do for the rest of my life. It's what I've wanted to do since I was six years old. And tip number six, tools. I'm not saying tools as in programs to use, you know, Scribner. Big fat dog made so much noise laying down right below you guys. She's literally right below you guys. There's a whole house behind me. 
she has to be at my feet. The tools I'm saying are things like my favorite pen for making notes. I love my notebooks. My editor slash bestie recently bought me a bullet journal that, that's, oh, it's backwards, but 2022, that's as creative as I get. I'm not a creative person when it comes to like art like this, but I use this for all my brain dumping, for how much I spend on marketing, for, you know, character ideas, anything like that. I have, this is so weird, I have a favorite pencil. That is for my note taking, because you know, sometimes you need to erase it, or like deadlines, um, make your deadlines in pencil. But it's just, it's an old school mechanical pencil that I found in the house, and now it's the only one I will use. I don't know, I don't know why. Maybe you need to have your drink. I always have to, and I have to have a sippy cup. It's a Christmas sippy cup, actually, because I tend to spill liquids on my keyboard and have to keep replacing them. You're gonna discover this weird thing that all authors end up doing. We have our good luck charms that have to be near us at all times that for some reason feeds a creativity. But find those tools that you know you need near you when it's time to write. If it's a dictionary, if the source, I don't care, find those tools. I hope this helped and I will see you guys next Friday. Mwah! By the way, last week's video, I didn't forget to upload it. I forgot that it was Friday and I forgot to film anything at all because the week just got away from me. So, sorry about that.